Affpoint Policies and Insights allows you to find, prioritize, fix, and enforce your Microsoft 365 security settings. To get started using Insights, log in to Affpoint Online Services, and on the home page, locate and click Insights for Microsoft 365. The first time you use Insights, it's going to walk you through a short wizard. This is to ensure that both your Affpoint Online Services and Microsoft 365 prerequisites are in place, and to help you set up your sensitivity and exposure, as well as defining for the system the scopes you want to examine. To kick off the wizard, down at the bottom, click Get Started. The first thing it's going to do is check your AOS configurations, including your auto discovery setup and your app profile. Back in Affpoint Online Services, you can see these by going into their individual screens. The first time you logged on to AOS, you would have also had a wizard which helped you configure both of those settings. The app profile allows AOS to connect to and communicate with Microsoft 365, and the scan profiles allow it to catalog your various objects like your Microsoft Teams and your SharePoint sites. We can see that those are coming up as configured, so it's identifying that the system is ready to use. It's also going to check your Microsoft 365 audit log search, which is required to be enabled. That setting is enabled as a default in Microsoft 365 Security and Compliance Center, so unless it has been turned off, it will come up as enabled. Please note, if it shows that the audit log is not on, or if any of the AOS settings are not yet configured, you will not be able to proceed to the next step in this wizard. Since everything for us looks good, down at the bottom we click Next. We then get to the sensitivity definitions. Sensitivity definitions are used to identify content in Microsoft 365 that could be considered sensitive and therefore needs to be protected. There are many out-of-the-box sensitivity definitions and to find what you're looking for, you can either scroll through the pages, search, or filter. So for instance, if I wanted to filter down for specific sensitivity definitions focused around the United States, I check that off and click search. Let's say for our purposes here, we're trying to look for personally identifiable information. So I hit that slider to turn that on. Now, what is actually included in that? Well, out to the right, if we click the Action button and then choose Edit, we can view what is considered high, medium, and low sensitivity. Within each of these, you're going to find what are called groups. Groups are organized conditions. So we can see here under high sensitivity, all of the following conditions must be matched and we have taxpayer identification numbers, social security, passport numbers. So in order for some content in Office 365 to be considered highly sensitive, it must contain all three of those things. If you would prefer to use the any condition, click all and choose any. Now any of these things come up within content in Microsoft 365 and that thing would be considered highly sensitive. Scrolling down, we have medium sensitivity, which is as a default set to any. And under low sensitivity, we can see that there's actually nothing there. If I chose to, I could click add a group and then click the plus sign to add a condition. And here's where we can modify what can be found in the default sensitivity definitions. Again, in here we can search. So if I wanted to add, for instance, driver's license number, and then click Save. We have now added that to our low sensitivity. Of course, this comes down to internal policies and compliance regulations for your industry. Perhaps driver's license doesn't belong in low sensitivity, so I can delete the entire group, and maybe I'd like to add it to medium. At any point, if you would like to reset back to the defaults, you can click your reset button and then click OK. Also, please note that you can modify these later and create custom sensitivity definitions as well. We are just going through this initial setup wizard so we can get insights up and running. 
To go back, I click the back button up at the top left. And I'm going to stick with the US personally identifiable information and we'll click next. The next step is to set up your definitions of exposure where sensitivity looks at the occurrence of certain things within your content, exposure looks at who has access to your content. So we can see here under high exposure level, external users greater than zero. Essentially, if there are any external users. Now, if you're wondering to what, that will be the final step of the wizard, to your teams, to your SharePoint sites, and so on. Have there been any anonymous links shared? Has the content been shared with everyone, the everyone group? Is it a large group, a group with many members? And have we done direct sharing of content? To change any of these settings, we click edit. We can see some of these rules are set based on the thresholds and some of them are simply active or not active. Below high exposure, we have medium exposure and low. Anything that does not qualify as high or medium will be considered low exposure. You cannot edit low exposure, but you can edit medium in the same way you can edit high. We can see here, for instance, that shared with a large group consists of 20 to 30. So that essentially means that any group 19 or lower will be considered low exposure. Maybe I want to change that 10 to 20 and then under high exposure we'll edit so that large group is more than 20 and then okay because that's what we consider to be a large group. Once your exposure values are where you want them to be we click next and the final step is to define what you're examining, your scopes, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint Online Sites, OneDrive for Business. These are either on or off. And when you turn them on, you then have to define which of the objects within that scope you want to examine. Now you'll notice here under Teams, I see default team container, and that is my only choice. If I go to SharePoint Online, default SharePoint site container, and OneDrive default OneDrive for business container. Where are these container terms coming from? These are not being pulled from Microsoft 365. These are being pulled from your AvPoint online services auto discovery settings. Under scan profiles, you can configure how AvPoint online services talks to Microsoft 365 and catalogs all the different objects and object types that it finds. If you are using simply an express mode profile, you are cataloging all objects of a certain type into a container that is called default. So that's why I'm seeing default OneDrive container, default SharePoint container, and so on. If we had created an advanced profile, advanced scan profiles allow you to build conditions where you can define how you're finding certain types of objects and then put them into separate containers. So as an example, I could build advanced rules that say all the marketing teams go in a teams container and all the sales teams go in a sales container. And if I did that, then when we come over into these other tools like insights, those would be available there for us. So what you've done in AOS will determine what you can see over here. For our purposes, I'm going to simply hit select all. So we're scanning all objects. Doing that in this example only hits the default OneDrive for business container, of course. And then down at the bottom, we click apply. And that's it. In the background now, Insights is applying all of the different settings that you just put together. It is pulling information from the audit log in Microsoft 365. And it's going to begin building your dashboard, your risk analysis, and your exposure reports. This, of course, may take some time. Thanks for watching this short video on getting started with insights from AvPoint Policies and Insights.